The 2022 Asus ROG Zephyrus G14 now features the latest and greatest in AMD hardware fitted inside its 14-inch sleek form factor chassis. The brand new Ryzen 9 6900HS processor alongside DDR5 memory and an RX 6000S series dedicated graphics card is impressive. Put that alongside the 2560 by 1600 120Hz display and you have a sleek, high-performance, multi-purpose laptop. Oh yeah, you get some fancy back panel light in too, if you're interested in that thing, I guess. So as Asus finally nailed the G14 with the brand new AMD hardware, let's take a closer look. In this review, we're primarily going to look at the new AMD hardware that Asus deploys in the ROG Zephyrus G14. So that is the new AMD Ryzen 9 Zen 3 Plus 6900HS processor and also the RX 6800S graphics card. AMD's new Zen 3 Plus Ryzen 6000 series mobile processors, codenamed Rembrandt, usher in a slew of new technologies, primarily built around improving power usage and therefore battery life for mobile deployments. We've already done an article on these processors on the main Kikuru website, so make sure you check that out for more in-depth details. To summarise briefly though, the AMD Ryzen 9 6900HS is an 8-core, 16-thread processor operating at 3.3GHz base and up to 4.9GHz boost with its 35W nominal TDP. There is flexibility in these numbers though, especially with AMD's improvements to the frequency voltage curve and also the way in which the system is controlled from a power configuration and frequency level. TSMC 6 nanometer process technology helps AMD increase transistor count from 10.7 billion for previous gen Ryzen 5000 mobile to 13.1 billion for Ryzen 6000 mobile. The platform side of things has been improved significantly too. You now get DDR5 or LPDDR5 if you prefer. There's PCIe Gen 4 connectivity throughout. And it's really good to see overarching USB 4 support also with a clear route to Thunderbolt 4 connectivity if a manufacturer so decides. The new integrated GPU is built around RDNA 2 architecture and features 12 compute units inside the Ryzen 9 6900HS. We're not really going to be looking at the iGPU in this review given that the laptop ships with a dedicated GPU, the RX 6800S. But the built-in GPU is handy for media acceleration type duties, especially with AMD's improved support for H.265, H.264 and AV1 codecs, all at high resolution and often high refresh rates. I must point out also that there is a MUX switch in this laptop, so that can be useful if you're only going for dedicated GPU gaming applications. Switching focus to the still relatively new AMD Radeon RX 6800S dedicated graphics card. This is an RDNA 2 based laptop caliber dedicated GPU that is built for a balance between performance and efficiency. AMD's RX 6000 S suffix series, try saying that fast, of graphics cards actually go up against Nvidia's Max-Q type laptop graphics cards. The RX 6800S is built on TSMC 7 nanometer process technology and features 32 compute units for 2048 shaders that clock up to 1975 megahertz according to the specifications. The TGP in Asus's deployment is 80 watts but that can actually bump up to about 105 watts according to the manual in the Smart Shift Max algorithm and we'll get more onto that a bit later. 8 gigabytes of 16 gigabit per second GDDR6 memory is deployed on a 128 bit wide memory interface. There's also 32 megabytes of high bandwidth infinity cache on the GPU. This graphics chip is most comparable to something like a heavily downclocked and power restricted RX 6700 XT on the desktop side of things. So that should be pretty competent indeed for 1080p gaming and it should be fine for QHD or QHD plus gaming that this laptop screen natively runs at. And that's especially true if you're a frame rate aficionado and you want to use technology such as AMD's FSR to really boost up those numbers even if you do change the image quality slightly. With the application of the latest hardware from AMD on the CPU and GPU fronts, this allows Asus to unlock some of the AMD Advantage technologies. Notably, the ROG Zephyrus G14 supports AMD Smart Shift Max. This allows the CPU and GPU to share their power budget between them in instances where, for example, the GPU needs a copious amount of power and the CPU is not doing much, or vice versa. I think this is a really smart technology that we saw AMD introduce and then of course Nvidia and Intel have got a competitor system on their laptops. 
but I really do think this is smart. Why have all that cooling hardware if you're just going to restrict the CPU to what it requires? Why not give it more capacity when the GPU isn't doing something, for example? According to Asus's running specifications for the default performance uh, noise limited, not over the top mode that this laptop should be run at, unless you're pretty crazy and you want to go for turbo, the CPU can increase from 35 watts TDP to 45 watts TDP if the graphics can dedicate its power headroom, or the graphics can increase its TGP from 80 watts to 90 watts if the CPU can lend it some power. And once again, that's in the performance power mode, which is pretty much the default for this laptop. I really do like the concept of Smart Shift Max, but we'll have to see how it works in actual practice in the G14. And if we take a look at the other hardware and technologies deployed for the Asus ROG Zephyrus G14, there's quite a bit to quickly breeze through. So you get a strong amount of horsepower squeezed into this 14-inch class 1.75 kilogram vapor chamber cooled system. There's 32 gigabytes of DDR5 4800 MHz memory alongside a 1 terabyte PCIe Gen 4x4 NVMe SSD. The ROG Nebula display uses an IPS level panel and 2560x1600 16 by 10 resolution, which is a smart balance for the 14 inch form factor, especially when combined with the 120 hertz refresh rate. Three milliseconds response time, adaptive sync, 100% DCI P3 color. This is a really nice laptop display. There's Wi Fi 6E, HDMI 2.0B, not HDMI 2.1, which is disappointing. You get dual USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type C with display port output. There's two 10 gigabits per second USB type A ports, a micro SD card reader, and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Charging of the 76 watt hour battery is done by a 240 watt power brick and barrel style connector, but 100 watt USB-C charging is an option through one of the ports, so that's ideal for if you're traveling or don't need the GPU full power headroom. Peripherals are also strong. The pitch of the backlit keyboard is excellent with thick keys that have plenty of travel. The mouse pad is clean and sturdy too, and it's massive. Plus you get a 720p webcam with Windows Hello support. There's also the cool customizable anime, anime, don't know how you pronounce that, matrix LED display on the back of the laptop lid. Granted, this doesn't really add any useful functionality and does increase laptop weight by 100 grams, but it certainly does catch people's attention. Pricing for the Asus ROG Zephyrus G14 in its AMD Ryzen 9 6900HS and Radeon RX 6800S, guys, looks to be about two and a half thousand US dollars, so probably about 2,500 great British pounds. Certainly not cheap, but nor is any hardware in the 2022 market. So let's see how it performs. We test in the out of the box state with minimal adjustments made to the laptop as is shipped from the vendor. The key caveat here is of course we install our own benchmarking and testing software and for Asus in particular, we uninstall McAfee. It's, it's junk, Asus, seriously, just stop including it. I don't care if I have to pay a dollar more for the laptop, it is junk. So what this means is that each laptop, particularly the Asus ones, are tested in their default performance power profile mode or something along the lines of gaming or high performance for the competing laptops, but not the crazy turbo overclocked modes. We include some relevant testing data from a few laptops that we have handled recently, and we've also got a few more in for some additional test data, so hopefully we should have some good set of numbers here. Notably, we have a Core i9-12900H powered Asus ROG Flow Z13 laptop. This is a similar compact form factor to the G14, but features an RTX 3080 mobile eGPU solution to help us run a proper gaming comparison of the CPUs. The long duration power of this Core i9-12900H processor is 35 watts inside this unit. We also deploy the Asus ROG Strix G17 that we reviewed on the main Kikuru website. This uses a 45 watt caliber Ryzen 9 5900HX and a 115 watt RTX 3070 laptop GPU. Despite being a much larger 17 inch unit, it will be interesting to see how the CPU and GPU performance compares. And for some additional test data, we include a 21 watt run in Ryzen 7 5800U based Asus ZenBook 13 and a 28 watt rated Core i7 1165G7 Tiger Lake based Razer Blade Stealth 13. As always, if you want more details about this laptop, about the comparison laptops, about the hardware that we're using and the software and the settings that we're using, 
All of that is over on the written web page on the main Kikuru website in a bit more detail, so do check that out. Let's get into the testing. Looking at the chart for temperatures, power and clocks gives us a good overview of how the Ryzen 9 6900HS processor behaves when loaded under the performance power mode and without the discrete GPU. We see the 35 watt rated processor holding stable at its 45 watt power budget thanks to SmartShift Max. The corresponding clock speed is a highly stable 3.8 GHz average across the 8 core chip and this translates into a running temperature that settles a little over 80 degrees Celsius. AMD's approach is to run clean, pure frequencies and power budgets for all core loads. This differs to Intel's approach that would see a huge spike in power for the early parts of the graph before eventually dropping down to a nominal 28 watts, 35 watts or 45 watts or similar. The key takeaway here is that Asus's cooling and power delivery does a superb job at allowing the AMD Ryzen 9 6900HS processor to run at a preferential clock speed and 45 watt TDP for extended time periods without any throttling. There's a lot of untidy data in this scatter graph, so it's probably best to pause and examine the curves if you're really interested. I will also point out that this data is mostly for reference usage only, as I did just run the one set of analysis here and actually the one set of testing. Plus, there's a slight timing differential between the GPU-Z and HWINFO data, though this doesn't really affect the trend visualizations. Effectively, what the data is showing is how the G14 operates under an extended gaming load. The CPU package power reported looks to actually be more accurately displaying the CPU plus DGPU power usage, presumably due to the way in which power is shared between the two under Smart Shift Max. But reading between the mess of data, we see the CPU operate at around 15 watts of power eventually, which translates into around 2.7 GHz average core frequency and an easy sub 80 degrees Celsius temperature. The GPU starts off around 80 watts of power usage, it's full TGP, when the system power budget is around 100 watts in total. This GPU power allocation trends downwards though, as the G14 sees restrictions applied to its running power. After more than 20 minutes of gaming, the GPU pulls around 55 watts of power and operates an average of around 1700 to 1750 MHz core clock. GPU temperatures are absolutely fine at around high 70s. With the system happy to deploy around 70 watts of power to the GPU, and CPU after more than 20 minutes of F1 2020 1080p gaming, Acer seems to have been smart with the balance. 55 watts allocated to the GPU maintains lofty frequencies, while the CPU's modest power allocation is fine thanks to Zen 3 Plus's excellent voltage scalability. Let's listen to the noise output of the system. This seems perfectly reasonable in my opinion, especially for the horsepower squeezed into this compact form factor. Asus seems to have a passion for cheaping out and providing entry-level SSDs, even in its expensive high-end systems, which is highly disappointing. There's little to indicate that this Micron 2450 SSD actually benefits from its PCIe Gen 4x4 connection in terms of speed, and when additional games are loaded onto the drive, we notice a significant drop in the write speeds as the buffer capacity is eaten into. System runtime from the efficient AMD hardware and 76 watt hour battery is outstanding. We got around 10 hours of runtime in PC Mark 10's battery test, which should translate into about a dozen hours of reasonable system usage. Heavily multi-threaded performance from the Ryzen 9 6900HS boosted to 45 watts under SmartShift Max is excellent. In fact, this setup matches a Ryzen 9 5900HX inside a much better cooled 17-inch laptop. Blender's short BMW test also sees the G14 and its Ryzen 9 joint top in our chart. Here, the new Zen 3 Plus HS series chip beats out the Core i9-12900H inside a comparable chassis. The longer Blender Classroom test sees the 6900HS laptop cement its position at the top of our chart thanks to clean, consistent power delivery from the Asus. Handbrake sees another strong victory for the 45 watt operating Ryzen 9 6900HS inside the Asus G14. Frequency boosts and cache improvements for the new chip help it offer a small performance boost over the 45 watt Ryzen 9 5900HX. And versus the Core i9 12900H that is run at 35 watts long duration power, the 6900HS is considerably quicker. 7-Zip in its multi-threaded performance benchmark is another strong showing for the Zephyrus G14 and 6900HS. As always for Zen-based architectures, decompressing performance is particularly strong, 
and high-speed DDR5 memory is likely helping the Zephyrus G14 here too. The 32 gigs of 4800 MHz dual-channel DDR5 delivers strong bandwidth for a system with a SODIMM slot. That's even with AMD's quirky write speed performance in ADA persisting, as we're used to for Zen. Where the G14 and its DDR5 lack in terms of bandwidth versus LPDDR4 or LPDDR5, it does have latency benefits in its dual-channel operating mode. Single-threaded Cinebench performance from Zen 3 Plus is strong, managing to slightly outperform Intel's Tiger Lake in 28-watt form, as well as the older Zen 3 Ryzen 5000. But compared to Intel's 12th gen chip, with its lofty turbo frequencies and mixture of performance and efficient cores, the Ryzen 9 6900HS is very well beaten. AMD loses big here. Performance consistency from the Zephyrus G14 is excellent. Barely any Cinebench NT scoring is lost after 10 minutes. This is no surprise given the clean 45 watt and roughly 3.8 gigahertz operating throughout our extended CPU load testing. 3D Mark Time Spy shows strong performance for the G14, albeit with minimal margins between the three gaming big boys in this test. Fire Strike is a little more preferential towards the higher powered Ryzen 9 5900HX system, thanks in large to its bigger chassis with greater power capability. But the CPU profile test is strongly favourable towards the Core i9-12900H thanks to its greater number of threads via 6P cores and 8E cores. PC Mark 10 also favours Intel's Core i9 competitor thanks to a greater number of cores and lofty turbo frequencies. It will not come as any surprise to see the Core i9-12900H equipped Asus Flow Z13 winning in most of these gaming scenarios. That is primarily thanks to the high-powered RTX 3080 mobile eGPU solution used by that laptop for its gaming credentials. There are, however, instances where the stronger AMD Ryzen 9 6900HS CPU gets the G14 to outperform that Flow Z13, so it'll be interesting to see a more direct comparison when some of the new Intel laptops come online. What I'm really interested in here, though, is the fight put up by the Zephyrus G14 versus the ROG Strix G17. That 17-inch unit is physically much larger with better cooling and more power allocated to the CPU and GPU. But the Ryzen 9 6900HS and RX 6800S inside the G14 do a superb job at maintaining truly competitive performance versus that big gaming beast. That's even with the RTX 3070 mobile chip allocated 115 watts of power versus the G14 RX 6800S solution using at least 15 or so watts less and more often over 35 watts less. Plus, if you want to crank up the ante and run the Zephyrus G14 at its native QHD Plus resolution, there is the horsepower available to do that. Just don't expect the screen to operate anywhere near its 120Hz refresh rate in most modern titles at this resolution, unless you drop image quality, of course. That emphasizes nicely the benefit of the adaptive sync display, though. At least you won't have screen tearing if you do drop below a preferential frame rate occasionally. It's no exaggeration to call the 2022 Asus ROG Zephyrus G14 with its concoction of new AMD hardware an absolutely fantastic laptop. The Ryzen 9 6900HS processor is fast and incredibly efficient. The RX 6800S GPU pushes out some really impressive frame numbers, once again with strong power efficiency. And the inclusion of new technologies such as DDR5, PCIe Gen 4 and Wi-Fi 6E really do sweeten the deal. Plus, that 14-inch QHD Plus 120Hz display is really sweet to my eyes. On the CPU front, multi-threaded performance from the Ryzen 9 6900HS is really, really impressive. That's particularly true when viewed through the lens of performance output from its 35-watt TDP, albeit at 45 watts running for this laptop. The efficiency improvements with the new Zen 3 Plus architecture and 6 nanometer process technology look to have delivered very well indeed. On the single-threaded side of CPU performance, however, Intel still looks to have a really strong commanding position that is simply superior to what AMD is offering here. That's down to the fast new architecture for 12th gen chips, as well as the uber high power numbers allowed for short duration turbo, which results in really high clock speeds. That power curve approach is an area where Intel and AMD diverge in terms of their philosophies for designing their products. And it works well for Intel's single-threaded performance, but clearly it suits AMD's multi-threaded performance and power efficiency goals. Scaling up the power, though, that looks to be an area where Intel's new chips could be quite competitive indeed when you're less limited inside a small form factor chassis. We'll have to wait for some more samples to come through, but in this 14-inch form factor, 
yeah, the multi-threaded performance from the new Ryzen 9 6000 series processor here is very, very impressive, even if the single threaded is not quite as good as Intel's by quite a drastic margin in some respects. Gaming performance from the Radeon RX 6800S dedicated GPU was strong, especially when you consider that it was cramped inside this 14 inch form factor chassis and had to balance a lot of its power with Smart Shift Max, which is an impressive tool based on our testing. You shouldn't have any problems pushing even AAA titles well past 60 FPS when running at 1080p, and a reasonable QHD Plus gaming experience is achievable too, particularly if you're happy to drop a little bit below the highest image quality settings, or use something like FSR, I guess. On the downsides though, there are some to highlight. You've got the price, that's probably gonna be somewhere in the region of about two and a half thousand pounds, which is just incredibly high but perhaps somewhat justified with the 2022 laptop market and the sleek form factor. I guess a few of the surfaces do get a bit hot to touch under load, but that's perhaps nitpicking a little bit. There's no Thunderbolt 4 support, and that is disappointing at this level and at this price point, especially when you look at the Intel competitors, which really do deliver well on that Thunderbolt ecosystem. And as we see time and time again, Asus's choice of operating SSD is vastly underpowered for a laptop of this caliber. They really are cheaping out for a few dollars here or there, which just makes no sense to me. Overall though, delivering impressive performance from the new AMD hardware, 10 hours of battery life runtime from PC Mark 10, and a really impressive design implementation. There is a heck of a lot to like about the 2022 revision of Asus's ROG Zephyrus G14. I've been Luke Hill for Kicker. Thank you for watching our video review of the Asus RG Zephyrus G14 with the new AMD hardware, the Ryzen 9 6900HS and the Radeon RX 6800S dedicated GPU. Let us know what you think of the new hardware and this laptop in the comment section down below. Are you pretty impressed by the power that is crammed into this form factor? Did the battery numbers impress you too? Let us know in the comment section. If you want more details, then check out the main Kicker website. That really does help us out. Give us a like and subscribe if you did like the video. Check out our Patreon page and our merch store and I'll see you next time.